Today we're out here at a park. Uh, we actually came here once before, but we didn't realize it until we got here that the water is brackish. So at that time it wasn't a good thing, but right now it's actually gonna be pretty helpful. What we wanna do is we wanna start revisiting the whole brine shrimp ecosphere. And one of the things we wanted to do with this park in particular is gather some water and we wanted to get some soil from it, but it's high tide right now, so I might not be able to. But to start getting those natural just microorganisms going in that water. So we're gonna start grabbing some water from here, hopefully a little bit of soil. I think last time I saw some like seaweed or algae or some sort of green plant thing. And I'm gonna see if I can't get some of that. And then we're gonna start up a brine shrimp culture at home using what we gather here today. We figure no better way to start the culture than have a little bit of a natural kickstart right off the bat from nature. This is actually like concrete and larger rocks. So I'm gonna get some of the water from here and then we'll get some gravel and sand from a different area just a little bit up ahead. Okay, so this is the area that we're gonna get some of the, well, mostly sand. I said gravel earlier, but I don't see any gravel. There was this nice piece of wood that I wanted to grab because it looks like it's turning nice and green, but it's a little bit larger than I thought it was and I, I can't quite pull it out of the sand. So I'm gonna grab some of this maybe top it off with a little bit more water. And then that's gonna be what we're gonna to use to kind of help seed the cultures we're gonna start at home. And then we're gonna add the brine shrimp eggs to that. All right, that should be plenty. Now that I'm back from the park, or we are back from the park really, we're gonna start working with some of the materials that we actually gathered there. Now, again, we're trying to just kind of start a beginning culture for the um, brine shrimp. So this isn't gonna be sealed up right away. We're, we're trying to really cultivate the beneficial bacteria and everything that's gonna help complete a whole life cycle for everything that's gonna support life inside of a jar. So we're gonna take the bucket that we have. This is the thing that we gathered, the water as well as the sand in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up an air bubbler in here. And I'm going to try to set the air bubbler so it's not really very vigorous because we don't wanna like create chaos inside of here for everything. We just want enough to slowly get a little bit of a circulation going. Um, honestly, if I had a little like adjuster valve, that'd probably be the best way to go about it, but um, I don't have that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a few holes in the airline before it actually goes into this container. That way it can kind of bleed a little bit of the air pressure out first before it actually makes its way into the water. It smells terrible. All right, so we have an old air bubbler. It just happens to be what we have around. Um, some people would say that you might be able to even put like a fan that's blowing over it to kind of, if there's a air current that's passing over the water, it does actually make the water or the surface of the water move. And that will impart some oxygen into the water, but we're not just trying to do only that. I am trying to stir the water up as well. Um, especially since brine shrimp are filter feeders, if you don't have these stuff suspended up in the water, if everything settles to the bottom, they can't really feed off of it as readily. So you, the, one of the hard parts about a brine shrimp ecosphere in particular is going to be finding out a way to get that food accessible to them, despite the fact that it's going to be sealed. One of the other things that's going to be a little tricky when it comes to trying to set up the ecosphere is really getting the right, right salinity levels. Now, this is brackish water. So this was in a river that was in between ocean and well, river itself. So it isn't really fully salt water. So a lot of people will talk about the specific ranges brine shrimp are found in the wild when it comes to salinity. And a fun thing that I learned when I was reading is that it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the best salinity levels for them. A large reason why they're found so readily at those salinity levels is because when it's that salty in the water, it actually is easy for, or it's easier for them to survive than the things that feed off of the brine shrimp. So 
the brine shrimp would do better in a little bit lower salinity levels, but the things that like to eat the brine shrimp also do better there. You, I don't know if you can hear it, but there is a lot more air coming out of this than I actually want. So, got some scissors. And I am going to carefully cut a few little notches. I don't know if that's actually going to work. I might have to actually take chunks out instead of just cutting notches. Is it working? It's still loud. Yeah. <gasps> I got an idea. Oh, you're going to run the hole back up and yeah. then have the bubbles come out of the tube itself where you cut the holes. That's what I'm thinking. It makes an angry noise, but there's not much bubbles. Hmm. It's because there's water going into the tube. It's then spitting out at my face, but the water's going into those little holes. So I'm gonna set up the air bubbler now. And what I've done with the air bubbler is I've passed it through the lid of here, and then I have it going through this old soda bottle lid. I drilled a hole in here. I don't have like a small air bubbler stone or a valve to really control this, but we don't want a very strong bubbling current inside of the inside of the bucket. So what I'm going to be doing is, once it passes through the lid, this is just going to be kind of hanging out to the side. And you might think to yourself, that's all the air is going to be coming out of the container. But what I'm going to be doing is the very bottom part of the loop that's going to be sit hanging down into the water, I'm going to cut a few, few small little slits into that. And then once I hang it down into the water, it's going to have a gentle bubble coming from those smaller holes in the bend. I'm trying to make the hole really small. Trying not to cut too much because it's easier. <sighs> Probably gonna be too much. We'll see. <laughs> also, the more that the tube is bending, the uh, more air that's gonna come out. Yeah. Okay, downside to this method. You're going to constantly have water spurting out of the side of this tube. <laughs> so maybe I need to rethink this method a little bit. Um, what I might wind up doing now, instead of having this, is I'm probably going to put two more holes in the lid. One so that the air, this end can come back up, and then one so it can go back down again, so that way any of this excess water is just going to drip back into this bucket. So glad I put that piece of foam down. At first I thought that I would be able to control it. I was like, you know what? I'll probably be fine. I can just stop before I drill right into the table. Even though we have this protective linoleum. I never, it never works that way. Not for me at least. Maybe if you're better than I am at this stuff. Hey, we're not pros. Nope. It sounds like a kid that like got to the bottom of their like soda or drink and is just going and blowing bubbles into the water. Yeah. It sounds like exactly like that. Alright, so the last thing I'm going to do now with this before we just give it some time to settle in and just see how things do is we're going to add a little bit of brine shrimp eggs to it. Um, we put it in an old spice container after we cleaned it out really well because um, we, we, we lost the bag that these were in initially for quite some time. So this is much easier to find than a tiny little Ziploc bag. So I'm going to add a little bit of that into the, the well, I was about to say ecosphere, but right now it's just a bucket to see how the brine shrimp do in this naturally collected water over the course of this next week or so. And then after we see how they do with this water, we're going to then see if we need to change parameters, if we can use the local water, just kind of assess where we stand with this. Because we definitely want to try to get as much natural stuff incorporated with this attempt at the brown shrimp ecosphere over just kind of the more sterile setup we had to try it the first time. Don't worry, I'm not using the whole um, eighth teaspoon. I'm actually using far less than that. 
I barely, barely have any on here because these eggs are incredibly dense. Well, there's a lot of them into a small area, so. There we go. And now, turn on the air bubbler and let it go. And we'll see how those little brine shrimp buddies do over the course of this next week. I don't know what to say. All right, so, queso like cheese, but, queso cheese, but. Did I say salinity too much? Salinity, 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 nope. <laughs>